Hi guys and welcome back and today we've got a little bit of a different video. Now in today's video what we're going to be doing is have a look at this program called World Machine. Now World Machine is very useful, it allows you to create worlds and use erosion filters such as the ones up here to make it look a lot more realistic and get the masks from those erosion filters to then use in other programs such as World Painter what I'll be showing in another uh, video and then from World Painter we will be exporting it into Minecraft and then showing you how you can make these big awesome Minecraft maps. So today is a tutorial on how to make a basic map in World Machine and get all the erosion filters and everything set up for exporting to World Machine. So I hope you're excited for this, I'm excited for this and I guess let's get started. Righty ho, so a bit of information on what we're going to be building in World Machine today and what we're going to be building is something called the Lonely Mountain from the Lord of the Rings series. Now this is a suggestion from one of my subscribers if we can make this map in Minecraft. So what we're going to be doing is making it today inside World Machine. Show you how I start off making maps and then just take it all the way through to building on the actual map in Minecraft. So, without further ado, let's have a look what we've got along the top panel. Tools, not so useful at the moment, but I will explain them a little bit later. We've got favourites, these are the ones you use most often. So they're the ones I use most often. Macros, now these are things which you can download from the website. I've created a few of my own, such as one here, um, and I've also downloaded this one here called Foothills. So macros are kind of a big group of devices, so if I open this up, and let's go enter macro, as you can see there's a lot of devices inside this one little thing, it just makes it a lot more simpler to use and implement into places. So that is what a macro is, and we'll just get rid of that. We've also got generator, so this allows you to generate terrain, it allows you to make noise, so these purely noise I'll explain in a minute can make a constant like variable so as you can see if we look up here in this little section here we can adjust that and put it all different heights such as this so as you can see it's going up and down we also have we also have gradients so a bit self-explanatory bit of a gradient so we can tie all these and do all sorts with them so this is kind of how you'd make sand dunes and things like that that is a gradient we'll get rid of that one sorry for all the beeping as it comes up with an error message or not error but warning message then we've got radial gradient here, this is just to create, as you can see, a radial gradient. You can use all sorts of different, Gaussian, spherical, diamond, square and cone. I will delete that. We've also got, I'm not too harsh, sure how to pronounce this, but Veroinoi. I'm not sure, Veroinoi, I'm not sure. But there we go. This is what it does, it has these patterns, you can change these a bit around, make it look a bit more however you want. So that's another important one, which I use quite a lot. Colour generator, kind of self-explanatory generates a colour, let's put a nice blue or something, yep just generates a colour, that's useful later on when we're texturing the map, also got finally got a file input, so this is if you already had a height map which we're going to be getting from this at the end, height output as you can see, if you wanted to import one then that's how you do it, don't use that one too often. So in the output section we've got height output as I just described over there, that gets you a height map, a black and white image, mesh output that is like an object file if you wanted to use it in rendering so all sorts of things you can use i quite often do that for rendering pictures bitmap that's kind of how the train looks so if the colors from it and overlay how it would look i'm going to show you that it basically just makes a image from what you've put into it so there's our one there very simple that's just the overlay get rid of that one and combiners kind of self-explanatory just combine the different things so if we put two of these just combine these two outputs into one and filters, these are something we'll come back to later, I think, and along with the natural ones as well. Selector, it selects certain properties, so for a certain slope, um, certain height, all sorts of things like that, certain colour, certain angle, and certain convexity, or something like that, yep. Converter, that's just some other stuff I don't really use too much. I've never actually seen this one before. Alright, okay, uh, just as colours and things, I guess. So that's those generally used for colours and all sorts of things. Parameters, that's for something when you're making macros. And flow and control, I'm not too sure because I've never really used these. But I'm sure I'll find a use for them one day. So let's get started and have a look at a few of the things on the generator tab. So for the most important thing really with World Machine is this layout generator which I'll build stuff in in a minute and then show you what I've done afterwards and explain it a little bit. But for Minecraft just one important thing is that we have to have this unit here set to 255 as that is the maximum height which Minecraft can work at really. So actually a few more things. 
under here we have got this we want to set this to 4.096 and that's going to be 4. 4096 meters in minecraft or 4096 by 4096 size map that's good so we're going to un um, check that plus one because we don't need that for minecraft and we're just going to hide this until it says one that's one meter per pixel that's about what we want when we want to export it but for now just so it goes a little bit faster we're just going to put it about there i guess maybe even a Mm, probably about there will do good so that's all good and we're gonna have a look at this layout generator now I'm gonna explain a few things and then we're gonna build a few things so here what you've got is your box so just draws a box we've got a circle funnily enough draws a circle polygon that's so you can draw weird shapes like that um, delete some of these just so my computer doesn't freeze like it has been doing and then a line kind of self-explanatory a line right what we've got here is the standard I think on the free version you only have just standard but if you've got the full version you have smooth that just makes it a little bit better now we want to use breakup that just makes it look a bit funny I'll show you what that does so he uses fractal breakup to make the terrain look a bit better so you can see a bit more randomized and looks a bit better so without further ado we're going to have a look at some of these other things once this dies it's on the freeze there we go and under here we've got shape properties now we're going to get rid of this line for now I think just so it doesn't lag as much and I'll just get, uncheck use breakup just so it goes a bit quicker let's draw just a simple line with a few points three points will do fine and once it decides to load there we go and then click on it and click on this button here now um, default height that's just how high it the actual thing is so as you can see here it's very very high it's all white that means it's very very high and once it decides to load, it is lagging a bit because it's very resource intensive, this program. Um, it's a very good program, does a lot of things, but because of that, it does use quite a lot of kind of computer CPU power. You can see it's loaded it a little bit, so we're going to hire it back up again. I'll just stop the video and let that hire and be back in a minute. Opacity is kind of very self explanatory how much it affects the terrain. So at the moment, it's affecting the terrain by 100% down while we can lower that. And do all sorts of things with opacity. I'm not going to mess with that because it's going to make my computer lag even more. Fall off distance, as you can see at the moment, is very high. Fall off distance is taking like quite an area away from the line to kind of disappear into nothing. So lowering this, I'll just lower this and then meet you back in a second and show you the difference. So as you can see, lowering it has made it a lot closer to the line. You can probably mess about with this a bit more. So probably about there. See, it just changes its value. And once it starts to load, there we go. So I think for what we're going to do, and it's just going to be good at about one kilometer. Um, get rid of that space. There we go. So once that loads back up, see it's got a bit bigger. There we go. So the effect that I'm not sure what this fall off type does. Not too sure about that. Um, but the effect either adds to the terrain, terrain making it a bit higher, or it takes away from the terrain, making it lower or disappear entirely. So that's what that does. All right, fall off curve at the moment is very straight. If we have a look under. Um, once this size stop freezing so if we have a look under this tab up here you can see it's very very flat and it goes in a very straight line like so so we can change this with a few of these parameters we'll click on this again and I'll kind of want it an exponential curve or like a square curve if you've ever done this sort of thing in maths and that just kind of makes it have a bit of a curve upwards curve outwards is kind of like a square root curve and I believe it's an x cubed um, graph possibly not too sure um, so we're going to be leaving on this get these high peaks and I'll show you that under here kind of See it's made it a bit higher kind of curves upwards to that point um, But look even better if we had a lower fall off, but I think one kilometer is about right So show um, shape breakup. That's how much you use this breakup here. So higher and lower this You can probably imagine what it does either use it more or use it less. So that's probably about right So I'm going to build a quick uh, terrain and then meet you back in a minute once we've got this bit of a lonely mountain, mountain range. So, let's do that. So, what I've done here is created this bit of a pattern which looks a bit like a mountain. Now, you may notice something different, and that is that we've got water enabled. So, in Minecraft, the default water level is 62. So, that's what we've set it here. We can disable water level and all stuff like that. We can also change the terrain colour. I'm quite happy with it at the moment, but if you wanted to look at deserts, we have stuff like that. Just to mention a few extra features as we go along. So, here's our terrain. Um, you may notice that it slopes off on the side. That can be simply done by if you right click one of these points. Not like that. If you right click one of these points. Like so. You'll notice you get this sort of menu here. And you just literally adjust that slider. 
and it changes the height a bit. Now it's going to lag a bit because we're in smooth mode here, so it's probably going to crash. Um, but now it's loaded, as you can see, we've got this kind of sloping mountain range. So I'm going to put some mountains around the edge, and then we're going to have a look a bit at the advanced purling and a few other things, and that's probably going to wrap up today's video. So very quickly, this is a bit of an example of how you can subtract things from the terrain, so it obviously takes it away. And we're just going to lower this to about 50 meters, so we just make a little bit of a river winding around into the landscape. So we're also going to turn opacity down just a little bit, so it doesn't cut quite as harshly into those mountains. So probably about 50%, I'd say, maybe a bit less, something like that. And we're also going to set it to this sort of curve here. So that gets us this kind of river, and we're just going to extend these points out a touch like so. Something like that, maybe a bit more, and extend some of these out a little bit. There we go, looking about right. Increase that just a bit more so we get this kind of cut out here. And I think that looks about right. So I'm going to render this out, and then we're going to meet back in a minute, and I'll carry on showing you what you can do next with this sort of map here. So we've got this map here. As you can see, we've got the river, we've got the mountains around. So we're just going to add a little bit of noise to this area just to make it look a bit more interesting. So let's get cracking with that. So first we've got the Veroi noise and this kind of makes these patterns like this which look like hills and we can put this into the advanced purling with the mask so it only renders the advanced purling in these areas just to add that extra bit of noise so I'll show you that. So as you can see if we actually remove this the advanced purling looks like this but we can mask it to certain areas so it looks a bit more interesting like so. And I'll show you that once it's rendered. So now it is rendered and as you can see we've got these like little hills with a bit of noise on them just to make them look a bit more realistic. Now what we're going to be doing is adding it to the original terrain. So what we can do is grab a combiner, I'm going to set this to add mode. I'm just going to add it by a tiny amount to the terrain, so like this. And pop it, something like that. And we get this terrain here. Now I want to reduce this add just so we get the hills but not too crazy. We just want it kind of showing up a little bit. I'm also going to probably lower this height a little bit around here in a minute and yeah I guess put it about I don't know 50 no probably about 60 will do fine so we'll set it that and then I'll leave it to render out and we'll meet back in a couple of minutes so now this is all rendered and as you can see we've got, got these like, little hills along the terrain and then you can see them around here-ish so we're just going to wrap this up with doing a few of these erosion things so we're going to add a coast erosion a thermal erosion and a normal erosion as a quick explanation of these, erosion, this normal erosion does, if it was like raining, where the rivers would go, where the sediment would move. Thermal erosion is kind of normal thermal erosion, like the um, thaw and whatever it is, uh, freeze thaw action sort of thing. And coast erosion is just where it erodes along the coast, so I can show you that very quickly. Click that. I you can see, you have a look, the beaches kind of get a lot bigger and a lot smaller. About there will do fine, and we're just going to add it to cliffs, basically. So we're going to select this and click cliffs. Um, we, don't, we can just leave it as smooth underwater features as usual. So we've kind of got this effect where we've got these little beaches surrounding the area. So then we can just do a thermal weathering and I'll render this all out in a bit and then show you the final result and then we'll wrap up the video. So thermal weathering, want it to want to turn this down a touch. And then strength, want it kind of that sort of strength. Mass balance, that's how the higher it is, the more rock is left behind. The lower it is, less rock is left behind. So then you can see that in the little mini map thing. Probably about there, we'll do fine. Rock angle, not too sure, just look how it looks and then choose. Um, that'll do. Probably put that a little bit higher actually. That a little bit higher. There we go. That's probably way too high. I'll just reduce that down a little bit. And reduce that a bit as well. That looks awesome. So now we're going to go on erosion. Erosion base duration, that's how long it's going to erode for. How hard the rock is, so we'll probably want it about there-ish. Sediment carry, that's how much sediment is deposited, so we want it fairly high. Probably about probably about there ish, I'd say. We want it quite sharp because it's a mountain area. And we want the channel depth to be a bit if we set this channel erosion where it creates channels and things, we want it to be quite deep channel depth. Um and then quite a bit post channel erosion. I'm gonna turn this down just a touch and just customize these to how you want it. So looking at this now, it's been rendered out. You can see we've kind of got these rivers going through here, we've got the big mountain range. It obviously needs a lot more kind of customization, looking a lot better, so I'll do that off camera. But by our next video, we'll be ready to import it into World Machine and then do World Machine, World Painter, and do some things with that. So I hope you've enjoyed this bit of a tutorial, and I'll show you what changes next time, like what we've done to the map, and it should look a lot better by that point. 
So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. And I guess I'll see you next time. Goodbye from Crafting Redstone. So when you combine these, it pinpoints a pixel and writes it using the RS null latch into the piston display. So at the moment, this one isn't wired up. So let's go.